listeners, and welcome to the Afriwetu podcast, where we look to celebrate African history and culture by telling our story. I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you so much for all of you who are listening, as well as the feedback that we're getting, because they honestly mean a heck of a lot. And I am just so jazzed that you're listening to begin with and enjoying the stories. Um, every single piece of feedback I take and I really appreciate it. So, for example, I just thought I'd read a few out. Um, when it comes to the content, I had uh, Kibali saying, you sound so alive and I love the storytelling. Thank you so much. Uh, I have Clara who said, I laughed out loud several times. Thanks for the education and insights. Um, Rona Loving the journey and development of Afriwetu that is taking, it's evolving, and I'm loving it um, from a real Zimbabwean people. So this one really touched me as well. Is uh, You got the pronunciation right. This was for the episode of the Kingdom of Mapumbungwe, and this is from an actual Zimbabwean. So thank you so much for acknowledging that. I really tried. Thank you, Simba. I love the sound effects. Also, thank you for finding Zimbabwean music makes such a great touch. Thank you, Manka. Thought was put behind the sound design. Great touch. Thank you, Kanyoro. I like the use of rhythm and sounds to make the story real and grip the attention of young minds. Thank you, Faith. I like the third episode. It's a serious historical event to recount in a storytelling way. It was really good. I can't wait to listen to the next episodes. Thank you, Barry. They come together so nicely. The music, sound, everything. Thank you, Clara. Dr. Amy Gurukie says, love it, but I need longer stories. History has always fascinated me, but I'm learning a lot more than I imagined. From the soundtrack to the excellent storytelling voice, but you can't help but be pulled into this amazing journey through time. I need these stories to be longer, maybe 31 minutes. Thank you, Dr. Ari. I'll do my level best. One of the things that is important to Afriwetu is the role that fables and folklore play in our story and how we see ourselves and relate to our different cultures. So you guessed it, today is a fable and folklore show with a tale from Kenya. And I am so very pleased to have in studio with me one of my BFFs and a fabulous friend, Sophia Mudoni Kamere, as our guest narrator. <sighs> So a few things to share about this wonderful woman with us today. Uh, We've been friends since nursery, so about 15 years ago. Uh, She is the mother of a hilarious and most interesting young man. She's a company secretary and a legal eagle. Uh, She's an entrepreneur. She's a mentor. Uh, She's a singer, dancer, and all-round entertainer to her friends. (laughs) She's my ride or die. We still don't know what we're riding or why we are running to die, but hey, she's that person who is in deep with me with all the good, the bad, and the very ugly, and through laughter and support for all these years. So, SK. Hi! Hello, people. (laughs) Thank you very much for that very interesting intro. (laughs) Welcome. So... Tell us a bit about why you're here, like why you've agreed to do this, apart from the fact that, you know, it is your duty as my BFF to do it. <laughs> uh, well, I, I must say, when you first started talking about doing a podcast on African history, I find I found it quite fascinating um, because going through school, uh, we, we, we did do uh, history, of course, in primary school. And then I moved to a school where we were doing not much African history and then I moved to another school where we were doing mainly South African history and which was okay but I found that I missed out on on Kenyan history and then of course going to to university overseas and staying away for a very long time you kind of forget things um, and you forget your story and which is why your podcast which is rooted in our story uh, is quite fascinating uh, to me and I can't wait to see how it develops. So this is really to support you and to also lend my wonderful voice <laughs> to your podcast <laughs> and that is why I'm doing it. Humble as ever. <laughs> okay, so... How did I start? SK, 
Um, can you give us a little bit of a teaser about the tale you're going to read for us today? Hmm, a teaser about this tale. This is a story about a young girl. Mm -hmm. The love she has for her people, her community, her family. Yeah. And becoming a sacrificial lamb, really, <laughs> in order to save them. I, actually, I found find it quite traumatic <laughs> in that she... <laughs> She sacrifices herself in the way that she does. Uh -huh. uh, but I think to some extent we all do this in order to uh, have the best for our people. That's true. Oh, that's such a beautiful way to tell it. Um, thank you. Before I hand over, just a very few facts about Kenya. It's in East Africa. Its shoreline is on the Indian Ocean. Beautiful beaches, better than Barbados, I promise you. <laughs> It's bordered to the west by Uganda, to the south by Tanzania, to the north by Ethiopia and Sudan and Somalia. The capital city is Nairobi, and it is really the beautiful city in the sun. So, over to you to tell us this tale. Thank you. This is a fable of the Agekoyo people. The Beauty of the Lake, an adapted version of the fable of the communal sacrifice. The sun was very hot, the land was dry, thirsty, and hungry, and the sheep, the goats, and cattle died. The men became worried, and so they went to the medicine man. He said, let women and men gather round the lake with the cattle, sheep, and goats. Let them give these animals to the father of the girl. Now the people collected the animals and gave them to the father of the girl. The girl was placed in the middle of the lake and the waters of the lake came to her ankles. Then she looked at the people who stood around the lake gazing at her. She sang, Stranger in my father's homestead, do you say I perish? Man in the village, do you say I perish? Young people of the village, do you say I perish? Even my own uncle, do you say I perish? Rain come down, come bless the people, and I perish. The young men said, She cannot perish. Her lover was held back from rushing towards her, saying, Let me kill her, then she will be dead to me and to all the others. The girl sang again, Young man of my father, do you say I perish? Young woman of my father, do you say I perish? And my aunt and my mother, do you say I perish? And my grandmother? The rain can come down. Come bless the people and I perish. Now she almost disappeared and she sang. And my friend, do you say I perish? Who will be going with you? Young women of the village, do you say I perish? Women of the village, do you say I perish? Even my mother and my father, do you say I perish? Rain come down, come bless the people, and I perish. <laughs> then the waters of the lake covered her head and she disappeared, and the rain came down like waterfall. And the people were happy. Now this girl had a younger sister. 
she used to go with the other girls to the lake to fetch water. And when the other girls had filled their gourds with water, they said, Help me lift the gourd onto my back. And me, and me. And they would leave the little girl alone. What about me? she said. Huh? We cannot help you. You sold your sister for rain. And they went home. Being thus left alone, she said, Waters of the lake, shake yourself. Come help me lift my gourd onto my back. And the animal of the lake replied, I have a son. I cannot leave my son behind. I have a daughter. I cannot leave my daughter behind. The girl saw her sister come out, flanked on either side by a boy and a girl. She wore shining beads around her hips, and she gave the little girl more beads, maize, meat, and bananas. She helped her sister lift the gourd onto her back and went back into the water. At home, she found her mother was still out in the shamba. She resolved not to eat the food given to her or to wear the beads. She hoped to get more. She dug a hole and put them inside, but she did not tell anybody, not even her father and mother. The other girls always called her when they went to fetch water. They enjoyed teasing her and leaving her behind. One day, she said to her mother, Mother, if I tell you something, are you going to beat me? When I go to the river, the others refuse to help me lift the gourd because they say we sold my sister for rain. You malicious girl! Why do you remind me of those who are lost to me? And she was beaten away by her mother. Then the girl went to her father, and he also beat her. Lastly, she went to her younger father. If I tell you something, are you going to beat me like my father and mother? I am going to listen. I will not beat you. When I go to the river, the other girls refuse to help me lift my gourd onto my back. They say, we cannot help you. You sold your sister for rain. As soon as they go, I sing a song and my sister comes and helps me up with my gourd. She has given me some presents which I have hidden in the house. Tomorrow morning, when you see us go to the river, hide yourself behind the bush and see for yourself. When he saw the things that this animal brought, he told the girl that they must go to the medicine man. They went to the first medicine man and he made a mistake. And they went to another one who knew that there was this animal which keeps the girl in the lake and which gives the girl presents. He said, go brew honey beer for eight days. When it is ready, dig holes from the door front of your homestead to the river and in each hole place a gourd full of beer. Let the little girl entice the animal with a song. Let her start with the hole near the river. And standing on each hole, the girl sang, You man of the river, my father calls with honey beer and meat. She jumped to the next hole and the animal with the girl and the children on his side. He drank and drank and drank until he reached the gourd outside the door of the homestead. On drinking this, he reeled his head in the air. The woman and the children fell off and in another instant, the animal fell back into the river with a big thud. The woman was taken into the house and lived with her people forever. And here our tale ends. Thank you so much for telling us this story. And I really love the fact about how you dra drama dra uh, dramatized it. <laughs> So I think my listeners will agree that you're welcome back at any time to Thank tell you. more tales. So, um, but before we let you go, a few questions. First of all, tell us what was your best bit about this story? I think her kind of undrowning. <laughs> Is that a word? <laughs> her, I think going back to her family yeah. uh, was, the, was the best bit for me because I'm very much a family-centered person. You really are. Uh, so, so going back to her family and, and, 
and her being welcomed in the way that she was uh, was truly my favorite part. Basically, the end. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you. And then also the last thing is, can you just tell us a bit about what it is you do and how people can follow you? Okay. Um, I wear many hats, I think, like, very, like many, many like many people do. Uh, but the two main hats or, or one of the two main hats that I wear is that I, I run a business called Sawari Associates and uh, my focus there is governance, risk and compliance. You can follow me on uh, on on Twitter at Sawari, S-O-A-R-I Associates. And I also have my personal Twitter handle, which is also on Instagram, which is at Somutka. I'm a real Kikuyu. Because, <laughs> Such a Kikuyu. <laughs> because that is uh, just uh, using, taking the first two letters of my three names, Sophia, S-O, Mutka. <laughs> so it's S-O, it's at S-O-M-U-T-K-A, Sophia Modoni. Kamere. Very mogikoyo. I just haven't got enterprises at the end of it. Uh, please do follow me. And son. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Please follow her. Um, and again, thank you so much. And thank you all for tuning in. And until next time, mubarikiwe. If you have any feedback, any questions, comments, please do visit us on our social media platforms at Afriwetu on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. You can also email us at afriwetu at gmail.com. And please feel free to also leave a message at anchor.fm forward slash afriwetu. So I'd like to give a shout out and a huge thank you to my dream team. For one, Mwendwa Mbugwa for the direction and for all the support she's given me for Afriwetu. And then I'd also like to say a huge thank you to Big City Studios for editing mixing, sourcing the music, the sound effects, basically all things production in relation to Afriwetu because it really does make a difference and brings these stories to life. Thank you. Thank you.